Why, hello everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another edition of Let's Argue, where I go online, I take your hot takes, unpopular opinions, tough questions, I respond to the best ones, and, uh, yeah. That's the whole point of this segment. This episode is part two in a two-part series we did, asking you guys what you thought the worst album of the decade was. And here were your answers, and these are my responses. Revival by Eminem. It's the sound of a 40-something year old artist trying to evolve topically whilst also trying to keep the Slim Shady and pop stands proud too. It's a victim of trying to appease too many people at once by doing the bare minimum and is his worst album because of it. Yeah, I, I don't disagree that Revival is definitely contender for one of the worst records of the decade. I, I don't think it's entirely for the reasons that you've cited here, though. I think it's mostly because it's some of Eminem's worst writing ever, period. Worst songs ever, period. And Eminem, unfortunately, has employed a lot of weird rap style and delivery quirks uh, in his old age that are really shitty and unlikable. Like the smooth, super rhythmic, catchy, head-bobbing, funny, cartoony, personality-filled flows that defined the earlier leg of his career, as, as bad as records like uh, Slim Shady have aged a little bit over the years, because there are some tracks on that record that are a little cringy, because the humor doesn't land like it used to, uh, the skits don't land like they used to, some songs are too funny or silly or tongue-in-cheek for their own good, but having said all that, Eminem's rapping was infinitely more likable during that era than anything he's been doing as of late. The constant er -er -er angry voice and every word feeling like it has this annoying staccato quality to it. It's like I'm hearing a constipated, angry robot uh, rap at me, and I I don't like it. AJR's The Click. Never has the millennial mono genre been so thoroughly mishandled, appallingly marketed, and rendered so screamingly unlistenable. There are multiple auto-tuned scat breakdowns on the album, Anthony. Exactly why I avoided this record like the plague and did not review it the year that it came out. But yes, AJR is absolute trash, and uh, my reasoning for feeling that way is essentially that, uh, truly and honestly, their music is a reflection of uh, completely sterile, no troubles in the world, or at least the troubles that are presented are uh, given in this light where it's, it's like there's no real threat or danger there. It's like watching a fucking Disney movie. Um, and not a particularly good Disney movie, that is. Like a really bad, cheesy embrace of those types of uh, uh, narrative tropes. And um, I, I guess finally what I'll say is that stylistically, sonically, aesthetically, it is a cheap, offensive, and um, I guess I'll say creatively bankrupt amalgamation of every stupid, terrible, uh, market-tested millennial music trend to prevail over the past decades. So, um, yeah, it's obnoxious. Miley and her dead pets, literally no redeemable qualities. From vocals, song structure, and music, there is no aspect of the album that is the least bit pleasant to hear. I would much rather listen to Corey Feldman or Speeding Bullet to Heaven. Well, hey. What about the dick in the pussy? Is, is one of the many amazing memes and sounds and ideas off of this record. How could you not be into the genius of that line? Uh, the, the question of why they put the dick in the pussy? I mean, that is, um, you know, that, that kind of really just gets to the heart of human existence in general. And again, I mean, Miley asked that question years ago, and scientists, biologists, researchers across the world in multiple fields are, are yet to answer the question. We still have no idea. We still have come no closer to understanding and finding out why they put the dick in the pussy. Scorpion, overblown, annoying, whiny, and way too long. Not to mention Spotify cramming it down everyone's throats. God, that was annoying. That was annoying. At the end of the day, I don't so much get upset or angry with Scorpion as I do more life. Because that is truly the point where creatively, Drake learned he could put out literally anything and people would eat it up and play it and he'd make money off of it. 
and that's how you get a record like Scorpion. Easily the new Kalasic. I went into that project with high expectations, and instead of a decade-defining statement, I was rewarded with utter milk toast. The bars are dry, the beats are stale, and Cal's delivery is unconvincing. When Cal raps that he's a sad boy, it doesn't resonate at all, even though the topic is certainly relatable. Cal just doesn't have what it takes to survive on the rap game. I can't think of a better release to represent the title of most disappointing work of the 2010s than this embarrassing tape. How can you say that when every bar, every bar on Hot Dinner is true? Cal raps from the heart on that track, from the heart. But yeah, it's, it's not very good. It's, it's not a very good uh, tape. I mean, I reviewed it. I said it sucked. It sucks. Worst album of the decade is probably 17 by X. I feel as if it is the epitome of why teens consider themselves depressed after getting broken up with their girlfriend or boyfriend of a month and a half, along with the bad production that tried too hard to be lo-fi and X's singing voice, R.I.P. X, though. For sure, yeah, that record is uh, really melodramatic. The instrumentals are awful. The songwriting is too just uh, half-baked. I will say... One thing I do kind of admire about the record and the switch up X did here is that, uh, look, there was a very narrow sound that helped put X on the map in the first place. And on this record, at a point where he was at, at his most popular at that time, he's like, no, F that. I'm not gonna do, you know, another sip and tea type track or whatever. I'm going to <laughs> put out an emo rap album. Hey, I mean, his his hardcore fans still messed with it, I guess. Having said that, though, everything I said in my original review of the record uh, still stands. It, it's not good. Simulation Theory from Muse is full of uninspiring and just plain boring riffs. Cool concept, but overall the album just falls flat. Worst album of the decade. I did like some tracks off Simulation Theory, though. And look, it does have a cool concept, as opposed to Drones, which doesn't have a cool concept, and all the music on that record is just as sucky, if not fucking suckier, than the music on Simulation Theory was. And I don't know, I, I mean, when I think of terrible Muse albums of this decade, uh, Drones is kind of just like in a dead heat with uh, Second Law. I'm not sure which one is worse. If I had to pick a terrible Muse album, if a Muse album had to be the worst album of the decade, uh, certainly I'd pick one of those two. Death Threats by Tom McDonald, completely unlistenable at the surface, then when the context and point of view Tom portrays is found, it just makes the album 100 times worse. While I don't disagree with what you're saying here, and I haven't even heard Death Threats all the way through, I don't think Tom McDonald is truly worthy of a placement on a list like Worst Album of the Decade, or even to be named The Worst Album of the Decade. Mostly because I feel like the bulk of the unlikability of Tom's record here comes down to him actively trying to be unlikable. Tom is trying to troll his way to the bottom. While yes, he does have fans, and he has people who enjoy his music, and I'm sure he's happy to have fans. Uh, at the end of the day, Tom understands that in our current day attention economy, negative attention is just as valuable as positive attention. And I think that is basically how he makes his money in the music industry, by getting people to hate him and dislike him and actively go out to call him out and so on and so forth. At this point, saying Tom McDonald's record is the worst album of the decade would pretty much be giving him what he wants. This position as this bad boy, this controversial guy, this polarizing figure, when in fact he's just like a boring troll. The worst album of the decade is undoubtedly Nav's new album. There isn't a single likable thing about him or his music. Bad Habits was 47 minutes of pure fucking garbage and by the end of it, the only thing I gained was suicidal tendencies. Ouch. Ouch. That's harsh. However, I can't entirely disagree. Nav's new record is terrible. Uh, his music in general is terrible. There are few artists this decade that struck me as being so profoundly devoid of anything charismatic, compelling, interesting. The instrumentals are bland. The vocals are forgettable and soulless and bland. The lyrics generally suck. The whole thing is just a, a painfully mindless experience, which I don't generally 
mind if an artist's sound or their vibe is fun or intoxicating or exciting or unique, if you can really just get into the feel of whatever they're doing and not have to pay attention to the nitty gritty details and just enjoy it uh, in, in a more visceral way, nothing wrong with that. But uh, Nav even fails on that front. I just do not see the appeal of his music. It's so goddamn boring and mind numbing. And while I do think Nav's music lacks a certain flair for it to be truly excruciating, like uh, living through a musical torture chamber, I wouldn't argue against it as a contender for worst album of the decade. Lil Dicky Professional Rapper, easily one of the most brain dead, tedious, and boring rap projects of this decade. The only reason people give it a pass was for its technical proficiency. Even Nav's flavorless ass music is more engaging and compelling. Well, I don't know if I would take it that far. But yeah, Lil Dicky Professional Rapper, it's not a very good record. It's not a very good record at all. However, I would say that people don't just give it a pass because of its uh, technical rapping ability, uh, but also there are a lot of people who genuinely find the record funny. People who really connect for whatever reason to uh, Lil Dicky sense of humor. Now, I happen to be of the opinion that uh, in order to find Lil Dicky funny, you have to find a movie like Hot Tub Time Machine funny. I would rather have my ass branded than watch Hot Tub Time Machine. And there are many other things that I would rather do than listen to um, Lil Dicky's professional rapper again. Because, yeah, it's not very funny, and despite it not being very funny at all, or even the least bit clever, uh, all over the record, Lil Dicky is posturing as if, like, he's not being taken seriously enough. He wants to be one of the greatest of all time and taken seriously, and this, that, and the other thing, and, and like, wh where the hell is the follow-up, dude? Like, you came bursting through the door like you're this agent of change in the rap game, and the last we've heard of you is that shitty Chris Brown song and that shitty Earth Day song. Although, I'm sure at some point we will be subjected to another terrible Little Dicky record in 2020. Um... So there you go. Supermarket. Instead of proving he's a good rapper, Logic decided to prove he's bad at other genres too. Yeah, there were some pretty bad genre crossovers this decade, and um, this this one was definitely one of the worst. I would have to go over all of my negative reviews to decide if definitively it is the worst, but it's it's definitely one of the worst. Uh, Logic Logic really fucked this one up. Um, <laughs> it's it's hard to even uh, count it as a logic project because it's more the soundtrack to a book, I guess, and it seems more like just a really bad passion project where he just was doing whatever he wanted to do and he didn't care what anyone thought. And uh, yeah, it, it certainly sounds like that. The results uh, are there. The proof is in the pudding. He really didn't care what anyone thought and it sounds like it because I don't think anyone who had any uh, sort of or was trying to broadcast uh, any level of self-awareness or uh, really even self-respect uh, would do a, a hook like lemon drop, uh, lick your lemon drop. <laughs> Can't even say without laughing. Honestly, I would not uh, deny this as being one of the worst, if not the worst, album uh, of the year. I, I wouldn't uh, argue against somebody making that making that point. Greta Van Fleet's From the Fires. You can't just stand on the shoulders slash in the shadow of giants and try to pass it off as something new and exciting. Utterly ridiculous that a band of young dudes like that would try to pander so unashamedly to the boomer rock demographic. Why not the debut album? This is an EP. This is technically an EP. It can't be the worst album of the decade. Uh, but the debut album is, is really the most glorious faceplant of mediocrity and uh, also rip offedness uh, in the Greta Van Fleet discography, definitely more than this EP that you're citing here. However, uh, as, as bad and as annoying as Greta Van Fleet is, I mean, I don't know. They can kind of play their instruments, and they're sort of okay at ripping off Led Zeppelin, if that's not the kind of thing that um, uh, just sends chills down your spine and makes your blood curdle and just, uh, uh, I don't know, destroys your soul. If that's not the kind of thing that kills you from the inside out, uh, I could see why this record would be compelling. And honestly, I, I think there are so much more terrible failures um, other than this. You know, I, I feel like giving this worst record of the decade would be like giving a covers band album worst record of the decade. Like, it's it sucks, it's boring, it's not that interesting, 
but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's not the end of the world. Some would probably say Lulu by Metallica. I can't fully agree with there are some actually really awesome parts of that album. It's just really slow and drags on. And Lou Reed gets on my nerves. But other than that, the album is great. Yeah, Lulu. That album, I think, um, was, was unduly hated much earlier this decade, and I, I've already gone over why. I mean, Metallica fans and Lou Reed fans, what Metallica does and what Lou Reed does generally, it's like oil and water. Not that I don't think it worked together on that album, but, um... <laughs> Fans of one artist are not typically interested in what the other artist is, is doing. It's not their vibe. It's not their style. However, I do commend Lou and Metallica for being able to come together and do what they did on that record. I think it's a pretty ambitious undertaking. I think that Lou's poetry uh, fit in a really interesting way over Metallica's riffs. I think there were more positives coming out of this project than some may want to give it credit for. Instrumentally, it's certainly more compelling than some of Metallica's stuff around this time. Death Magnetic, hello. And in the scope of Lou Reed's entire discography, which is loaded with weird experimental detours, uh, Lulu is easily one of his oddest projects, which, uh, given how long the man had been on this planet up until that point, y you have to kind of give him points for. So, Lulu, Metallica, Lou Reed, overly hated. It's not that bad. And I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Those have been your picks, your opinions of worst album of the decade. I argued with them, or I didn't argue with some of them. Some of them I agree, I agreed with. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Mwah. Love you. Forever.